Hello, this is Veso from Chaos. In this tutorial, we are going to explore the new Chaos Scattering tool for Maya. Chaos Scatter is a great tool for instancing and distribution that allows you to easily populate scenes with objects. It's especially useful for outdoor scenes that need to be filled with trees, rocks, grass, and so on. I'll start by exploring the different scattering modes the tool provides. First, we'll take a look at the 1D mode, scattering on curves. We'll use this mode to distribute some vehicles along the road in the image. Next, we'll take a look at the 2D mode, scattering on surfaces. We can use this mode to scatter all sorts of objects on the ground such as trees, rocks, grass and so on. Finally, we'll use the 3D mode, bounding box scattering, to distribute some spaceships in the sky. We can use an object bounding box as a volume in which the spaceships will get scattered. Let's jump right into Maya and get started. We have a sci-fi scene here that needs to be populated with some trees, cars and whatnot to make it appear more lively. Let me start the interactive rendering so we can take a look at the scene at its starting point. Let's start by adding some cars on those roads. I have a camera here that is zoomed in closer on the road. Let me switch to it so we can see better. All right, to create a chaos scatter object, we can use the V-Ray menu and then choose chaos scatter, or we can also create it from the V-Ray shelf by clicking on the icon with the pine trees. Either way, we'll create a chaos scatter object. Let's rename it to keep things organized. This is especially good idea when we have multiple scattering objects. This way we can easily tell them apart. The first thing we need to do is to choose what to scatter and where. In the objects rollout, there are two subcategories, targets and models. In the targets table, we need to specify where the scattering will take place. We need to scatter cars on the road, but if we use the road geometry as our target here, the cars will not follow the flow of the road. Instead, we can use curves that follow the road and this way ensure the models scattered on those curves are all facing in the right direction. I have a bunch of curves in a group called Guide Traffic. If I select all of them and then select the Chaos Scatter object, I can middle click drag them onto the target section to add them to the table. Great! Now for the models, I have a group of vehicles that we can use. It's a good idea to have all of the objects to be scattered in one place. That way, it's easier to keep track of everything. Also, it's a good idea to do some prep work if needed to the objects that are about to be scattered. We need to make sure that their pivot point is located at the bottom of the object. Again, I'll select the group and then the scatter object and simply drag and drop them into the models section. Nothing happens in the viewport. That is because we need to specify the scatter type. Under the scattering rollout, we can choose from up to three scattering types. Since we're distributing on curves, let's choose the first one. As you can see, we've got some scattering going on, but in some areas there isn't anything. The reason for this is the viewport object count reaches its set limit, which doesn't allow it to show more objects. We can start by adjusting the scattering settings. Under the curve scattering rollout, we can tweak the settings to reflect the look we are going for. I'll increase the spacing between the cars because its default value of 4 is kind of tight. Let me try 100. And I'll also switch to the interactive rendering so I can get a nicer preview. As you can notice, it's very densely packed. We can turn on the avoid collision settings which will make sure that the model geometries do not intercept with each other. This certainly helps, but it still does look very crowded. I'll increase the spacing even further. That looks way better. You can notice that some of the cars are rotated in a strange position. By default, the Chaos Scatter 2 has a 360 degree rotation around the Y axis enabled. That is usually what we need for vegetation, but in this particular case, we need to turn it off. Let's go to the transformation rollout, and under rotation values, we need to make sure it is all set to zero. Now, all of the vehicles are oriented the correct way. Great! Let me introduce a little bit of jitter. That way the spacing between the cars would not be so uniform, which will make it look much more natural. By changing the seed value, we can get a different placement of the cars. We can do that until we find the look we are happy with. All right, that looks nice. Let's go ahead and add some trees next, because currently our environment is very desert-like. 
I'll switch to the more wide camera so we can see the entire area. Let me create another chaos scatter object. I'll also give it a name. For the target object, we need to add the ground. I have a low poly version of the ground that I can use for that. I'll go ahead and add it to the targets table. For the models, we need to add the actual trees. I have used the Chaos Cosmos browser to find some trees. Under vegetation category, there are all sorts of greenery that we can use. We can add each tree individually to the models list, which would allow us to control their scatter frequency, or we can add an entire group containing multiple trees. I've placed several of those Chaos Cosmos trees in a group, which I'll add to the models list. Great! There are some trees already scattered across the ground. Let's take a look at the scattering settings so we can modify the look and feel. We need to make sure the scatter type is set to 2D on surfaces this time. We can then open the surface scattering rollout. That is where we can control the distribution and the count settings. We can use two types of distribution, random and UV map. The UV mode uses UVW mapping to scatter instances in regular patterns which could be useful to make a vegetable garden, for example. We need just a regular forest, so I'll stick with the random mode. I'll increase the count to 100,000 to add significantly more trees. Great! The problem we have now is that the trees are growing everywhere. The water, the buildings, the roads. We can use a density texture to control the amount of objects scattered in a certain place on the ground. The density texture uses grayscale values between 0 and 1 to control the surface scatter count. So in the areas where we don't need any trees to be growing, we'll have pitch black color, or in other words, the value of 0. This looks so much better. We can make the distribution even more natural by limiting the trees on steep slopes. In the slope limitation settings, we can control the min and max angle values to achieve this effect. I'll reduce the max angle value to 15 degrees. And you can see right away some of the steeper slopes won't grow any trees. Alright, as a final touch, we can introduce some scale variation. This way the trees won't be exactly the same. And that'll make it appear more natural. In the transformation rollout, under the scale section, we can set a range of scale values. I'll go ahead and set it from 0.8 to 1.2. Having the cars on the roads and the trees already make the image look much more interesting and alive. But it feels a little unbalanced at the moment. We can add some flying cars to fill the upper portion of the image and also to make it look more futuristic. Once again, let me create a Kale scatter object. This time we need to scatter in all three directions within the bounding box. We can use any object as our target but it's important to know that objects will get scattered within the bounding box rather than inside the actual mesh. I have a box object that I can use. I'll drag it to the targets list. Same as before, I can simply track a group of objects in the models list. I have several spaceship models in that group. We need to switch the scatter type to 3D in bounding box to make sure that the actual scattering happens inside the box instead of the sides of the box. Great! The amount of flying cars in the air is way too many at the moment, so to reduce their number, we can use the count slider located in the bounding box scattering rollout menu. I'll reduce it to 200, since I don't want it to be so crowded. Good! We can add some scale variation if we want to, but I think it's good enough for now. I've also added one more scatter for spaceships traveling in a straight line. It is hidden at the moment, so I'll unhide it. The way it's done is exactly the same as the one where we scattered cars on the road in the beginning of the video. In this video, we went over the new tool for scattering and distribution in Maya, Chaos Scatter. We've explored the different modes within the tool for scattering on cars, on surfaces, and in bounding boxes. We've also played around with some of the scatter settings to achieve interesting results in a small amount of time. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. See you next time and thank you for watching.